First resource I want to share with you, I'm going to share my screen, okay, is this right here. I will give, I'll, I'll copy and paste the link. It's a playlist I created called Velocity Banking in a Crisis, okay? Everything I'm going to share with you tonight, I've already created content on since as early as 2019, maybe even 2018. This is an entire playlist that navigates the good, the bad, and the ugly of velocity banking. Can it work in a crisis, in a down economy when banks are, are shutting down branches and banks are closing credit lines? How can I continue to leverage in a crisis? How can I continue to, to have that uh, unfair advantage, call it? What are the proper steps? How do I take all the guessing work out of this stuff, right? How do I just stop guessing and go right to the source of each and every bank? What are the steps? How can I go about doing that? So I've got videos where it talks about, you know, does velocity banking work in a crisis? Velocity banking in a crisis, how to get a line of credit in a crisis, how to operate and pivot in a crisis, how to recover from a financial emergency, velocity banking during natural disasters, you know, during a, a, a hurricanes, earthquakes, uh, floods, um, flash flyers, tornadoes, right? When it happens in your local area, how, how can we continue to use these concepts when there's an emergency, an unexpected expense? I go over that. I go over, you know, if you got denied for a line of credit, how do you recover? How do you rebuild? How do you form a new relationship? What is the time frame? I talk about building a secure financial strategy for down economies. I mean, I've already gone through this stuff, velocity banking without a line of credit. You know, will the banks freeze or cancel my HELOC or first position, second position? Does velocity banking hurt the banks when we practice it? I mean, the content is already there, okay? Been doing this for a couple of years now, literally already there. So that's the first resource. You guys can check that out. Bookmark it if you're brand new. If you're wondering, okay, I want to do velocity banking, but I hear a lot of things going on in the marketplace right now and a lot of, lot of talks, I'm worried, I'm scared. Watch those videos first before you implement any of this stuff on your own. Okay, cool. So now let's dive into it. Velocity banking during a market crash, does it work? Can it work? Yes, it does. Can it work 100% of the time? No. Can it work for 100% of the people? No. Can it work 100% of all different situations? Absolutely not. So let me be one of the few uh, velocity banking coaches, gurus, experts, whatever you want to call them out there. Let me be the first to tell you that velocity banking does not work 100% of the time. Velocity banking also does not work for 100% of the scenarios, for 100% of different situations. Let me just be the first to tell you. It all boils down to the numbers. You have, you have to know your numbers first. You need to know what your goal is and how can velocity banking help you. If it cannot, we need to be able to say, okay, that is not effective for me. As your financial consultant, as your financial coach, when you hire me, trust me, if your numbers don't show it, I'm not going to force a concept to work in your favor for the sake of just saying that velocity banking is better than X, Y, and Z. I've never taken that approach and you can see it in my track record when you go to that playlist, okay? So there's a couple of things that I want you to be aware of and, and I'm gonna share my screen again and we're gonna go back real quick. We're gonna go back to, I'm gonna look at something. Let me see, where is it, where is it? Okay, here. This is a very, very good um, review of the concept velocity banking and it's titled Proceed with Caution. Disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. Velocity banking carries risk. Please discuss this with your financial advisor. The problem is when you discuss this concept with your financial advisor, they're immediately more than likely going to turn it off. So there really isn't much of a discussion, right? That can sometimes be an issue because they're, they're shutting you out from information that could potentially serve you well. But with that being said, I, I found this to be great. Um, because it was, it's very practical and it can really help you, especially those that are not clients of mine, people that are just coming across my channel. I want you to look up the bad stuff so that you can avoid doing business with someone that is not ethical or someone that doesn't know everything and they're just kind of like very, very hardcore in, in one area, okay? So a couple things I'm gonna, I'm gonna read here. Uh, let's see. 
some pretty good stuff that I saw. All right, so they say, you know, what is velocity banking? Velocity banking primarily leverages revolving debt to pay off amortized debt or high interest debt more quickly. I agree with that. The revolving lines of credit can include personal lines, home equity lines, right? Credit cards. I agree. The effectiveness of velocity banking can be improved if the revolving debt has a lower interest rate than the amortized debt or high interest debt. That is true to an extent, okay? There are situations where the amortized loan rate on a debt could be lower than your line of credit and still produce a net positive interest savings, okay? Sometimes, not all the time. So a little caveat there. The Velocity Banking scam. There are YouTube channels promoting Velocity Banking, like myself, with the premise of being debt-free within five to seven years. That is the standard measurement of the concept according to a lot of the experts and gurus in this space that do Velocity Banking. So that's just a standard the problem is where this person says, you know, all these videos claim banks are ripping you off because mortgage rates are all front loaded with interest. That is, you know, true, um, but it's a selling point. Uh, so he says red flag number one, it seems like all these people are uh, use a ridiculous high 30 year rate mortgage of 6%. According to Freddie Mac, mortgage rates have not been that high since 2009. By using such a high unrealistic interest rate, these gurus are inflating the benefits of velocity banking. I absolutely agree with this. This is a red flag. If you see someone on the internet using numbers like, you know, the mortgage rate, especially if, it, if they're saying, here's an example, like not a real case study. As you guys know, and for the new people, if you don't know, on my channel, I literally 99% of the time, I am using real life case studies, either my own numbers or my client's numbers with permission, right? I don't say their name or anything like that. I just give a story. I say, here are numbers, but these are real numbers. So you can look at all my velocity banking case studies and you'll, you'll see. Now I have seen mortgages at six and 7%. So it is unrealistic where to the extent where you're not going to see it as often, but trust me, they exist. There are people out there with mortgages of six and 7% that never refinanced and they're getting killed. Um, so that happens. So it is out there. Okay. Next thing says these YouTuber, uh, YouTube gurus also operate under the assumption that a family taking home 5,000 net income has 1400 in cash flow sitting in a savings account. Yes, that is the standard example that I have seen on so many velocity banking channels where they say, hey, you know, if an example, you know, somebody making 5,000 and their cash flow is 2,000, their cash flow is 1,400, they have a $600 credit card payment and a $400 card payment, and da 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 da. And if they just did X, Y, and Z, and pa pa pa, and they'll be debt free. And I'm like, dude, that's so unrealistic. How many people do you know that are bringing home 5,000 a month with cash flow of 1,400? Very rare, not often. A lot of my case studies, cash flows is like under 1,000, under 500, and we work our way up to the 14, 15, 2000. Along the way, we're also increasing income. Okay, so that was a uh, red flag number two for the person. It is highly unlikely that someone with a monthly of income of uh, you know 5,000 after taxes has an extra cash flow 1,400 and is deep in debt. This is true, I agree with that, okay? Red flag number three, they suggest you stop saving, like completely stop saving, no putting money in a savings account, no contributing to re retirement accounts. The rationale is that you can leverage a line of credit in case of emergency. Another rationale, is the money you would make in a retirement account is less than you could save on the interest you would save on your mortgage by paying it off sooner. I agree with this. And I will say that there have been case studies where I've had clients temporarily stop saving and temporarily stop contributing to their retirement accounts to redirect cash flow to paying off certain debts to increase cash flow to put them in a better financial position. Most of the time, when I'm dealing with a scenario like that, they already have an established retirement fund and an established emergency fund or savings account. They simply stop saving and redirect that because the efficiency, they're, increased, they're simply increasing efficiency for a temporary period of time. So there are times where it does make sense to stop saving and stop contributing 
and stop sending your money out to everyone and expecting the problem to fix itself overnight. No, that's a 40 year strategy. But if I'm in debt and I'm trying to accelerate debt for a period of time, it may be wise to redirect funds back to your net cash flow to improve the situation. So I agree and disagree with what they're saying, right? And then he says, you know, uh, um, the sales pitch guarantee the promise that it will increase your credit score, pay off debt faster, right? Yada, yada. Red flag number three, these services cost money and can decrease the effectiveness of velocity banking. That is the reason cash flow and interest used in velocity banking examples are so high. Okay. And I, I also agree with that to an extent. I also agree with that. So coming back here. So I, I agree totally with most of what's being said there. And that is a anti pretty much velocity banking article right there, right? Would you agree? Like that's pretty much, they're pretty much saying, Hey, before you get started, here are the caution, here are the red flags. You know, they're, they're used, they're, they're taking the mainstream stuff of velocity banking and ripping it apart. And I would too. I, I mean, I've done that on my YouTube channel, but I'm still practicing the concept with majority of my clients because we're simply doing it in a more efficient way. It's very simple. So with what they're saying, like I said, I agree with probably 95% of it. Totally agree. Yeah. It's unrealistic. The, the most popular, what the most watched video content on velocity banking that uses these examples are very unrealistic to what's actually happening in the marketplace. What's actually happening to, to people's income. Totally agree with that. I agree that the velocity banking, uh, coaching services and programs are extremely higher than if you were to hire a, a, a financial coach or consultant by the, by the hour under maybe, a, a Dave Ramsey or fire movement, or just a registered financial uh, planner, their rates can, um, I would say statistically are lower than if you were to hire a velocity banking expert at those uh, big YouTube channels, those high levels, without a doubt, their programs, their courses are, are expensive, right? I'll put me in that category as well. Like I have an online course available, velocity banking course. I do one-to-one -one coaching and consulting. I meet people where they're at. So I've worked with fire movement people, with Dave Ramsey people, with Susie Orman people. I've worked with everything in between people. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm meeting you where you're at and I'm seeing just how can I make your situation more efficient? That's all I'm looking to do. Increase your cash flow, increase your income, put you in a better financial position so you can become self-sufficient. So you don't need the government, welfare checks, WIC and all these programs and stimulus checks, so you don't need none of that crap. You can function by yourself as a kingdom citizen and rely on the main kingdom, not any particular government. So that's usually my, my approach. Now, I will be the first to tell you, as a Velocity Banking consultant, um, I've been called an expert, a guru, by many of you watching, I'll be the first to tell you, you don't have to pay me a dime to learn this concept and apply it and get results and and have a, a a ton of success you don't have to pay me or anyone a dime to learn this concept so why do people pay you denzel because they're seeking the hand holding they're looking to expedite the learning curve they are not trying to make mistakes and they're trying to build long-term relationships and they're looking for a financial coach, a consultant, someone that is going to hold them accountable with their money. So there's many, many different reasons other than just the concept itself as to why someone would, would hire me to, for me to serve them. Okay. I want you to comment if you're watching for the 57 people watching at the moment, I want you to comment if you're someone that has never paid me a dime and you've paid off a ton of debt, just watching the content. I can't tell you how many stories. I have from non paying clients and people that I've connected with in person at events where they told me, Oh, the person that sent me to your channel, uh, recommended I watch your videos and they paid off 50,000, hundred thousand plus of debt. And I'm like, well, who's the person? It was Tim. I look up, I'm like, which Tim? 
I don't have that person as a client. They paid off how much? What? And I've never spoken to them. And they're like, no, they never reached out. They just watched your videos and boom, they they implemented everything. They were like, you laid it all out. You put it all out there and they took off. And through that, then they told five, 10 people and somewhere in that, those people became clients, right? So I am more than happy than providing this stuff at no cost via the content that I provide. I don't mind. YouTube is paying me via monetization. I've got, because I'm in the kingdom, I'm receiving infinite amount of resources for me to operate. So I have that guarantee. I have the guarantee of YouTube as long as I continue to produce valuable binge worthy, binge worthy content on YouTube, I get rewarded via revenue um, from the monetization. And then people go above and beyond and they go in the super chat and they donate money. They give money or they sow seed into my ministry of finance where I'm working and serving moms across the United States, restore their kingdom authority, increase their cash flow, increase their income, pay off debt, fix their credit, position them to be a queen in the kingdom so that they can operate efficiently and fulfill their purpose in life and provide security and safety for their children, which is their utmost goal for most moms. That's my whole thing. Uh, so definitely let me know. Comment if you catch the replay. Let me know how much debt you paid off if you're someone that never hired me, never paid a dollar. So let me just be the first to say, in terms of the, the options that you have when doing Velocity Banking, you can go the free route, right? So that's the first one. You can go the free DIY, do it yourself. Costs you little to nothing. It, what it costs is your time and effort and patience because you got to watch the content. Okay. The second one above that is you got an online course. Online courses ranges range anywhere from as low as like say 150 bucks um, to in the neighborhood of like a thousand for like online courses from what I've seen specifically in the velocity banking space. Then there's one to one that's a little more expensive because you're paying someone by the hour on the hour, right? So that can rack up depending how many calls you need before it clicks before you finally get it and then the the most expensive thing is a software there are softwares out there that cost thousands of dollars one in particular that is uh, pretty well known in this space is the money max account and the company's name is united financial freedom it's a company i'm actually a part of and i work with them and try to strategize and try to give them you know insight in this in this space their software is anywhere from $3,500 to in the neighborhood of $6,500. That's a pretty big price point for most of my moms that are in America averaging roughly 40, 50 K a year. It's just not reasonable. So that's when they find me and they watch the material and they get results, never pay me a dime or they join my course. And I have one of the cheapest courses in the marketplace. And I do that on purpose to attract certain crowds, right? My course costs, $19.99 a month at the moment in 2022 to go up to $47 a month because I'm going to I'm going to add additional one to one services within that. OK, so I'm I do it on purpose to be competitive and to lower, try to manipulate the cost to learn this downward so that more people can get exposed to it. So that's just simply what I'm doing. And I might be cutting into other people's profits. Maybe that's why I get uh, hate here now and then or whatever the case may be I, I don't mind because again i have no problem with people not paying me a dime to learn this concept because you can you can learn it without paying anyone a dime and you can get a lot of results but some people just don't operate that well some people are just not going to learn that effectively with it okay so these are the options of velocity banking right here are the debt tools just a little refresher that we can use to incorporate the concept. You've got credit cards, both on the personal and business side. You've got personal revolving lines of credit or business line of credit. You have HELOCs, home equity line of credit in the first or second position. And then you have the Mac daddy of them all is the all in one loan. I would argue it's the safest product amongst all four options. Okay. All in one loan. Those are your four main debt tools that you can incorporate the concept pretty effectively every time. I work with clients or do videos. I usually start by saying you need to know your four major numbers, income coming in, expenses, money going out, total debt, 
you need to know the interest rates on your debt, the amortization schedule, the balance owed, the monthly minimum payment, what you've been overpaying, your, and then the fourth number, your net cash flow, conservative each and every month, right? So when I'm gathering numbers to create a buffer for this concept, because it's very volatile in terms of when we're actually implementing it, your numbers can change. So what, what I do with my clients is I say, okay, let's underestimate your income. How do we do that? Well, if they're an hourly person and they do time and a half, they work overtime, I say, well, that's not guaranteed, but guaranteed income is your 40 work hour week. So let's use that income number. Anything above that is simply gonna enhance the strategy. Make sense? Cool. Then I say we overestimate on expenses, okay? And I make it very clear to them what expenses are. Expenses in, is anything that leaves your checking account. So if you save money, that is an expense. If you are investing money, that is an expense. If you have a tax account where you move money into a tax account to pay your taxes, that is an expense. If you have money that you're tithing, that is an expense. You must list all of that and then let me know what is left over. Most of the time, when I'm dealing with lower income situations where people are spending right up to what they're making, if they're saving, investing, and giving, they typically have zero cash flow at the end of the day because they've allocated all the money into certain buckets. So I say, okay, there's no extra money. So we either A, have to increase income, or B, reduce expenses, or C, redirect cash flow instead of investing over here and earning 3%, 4%, and paying interest over here at 15 to 20% on debt, you would do better off by redirecting your investments for a period of time to have a higher net interest rate of return on your cash and make that more efficient for a temporary period of time. And then same thing with savings, potentially tithing as well, right? Some people might lower their tithe for a period of time. Some people might get rid of their tithe completely for a period of time and then amp it back up and make up for the lost time. That's an option as well. Okay, so a lot, a lot, a lot of different um, ways to look at it, but that's typically how I like to operate when I'm gathering your four major numbers. Okay, those are the options, those are the tools. Then there's the alternative to velocity banking where you've got the infinite banking concept, IULs, premium financing, the flex method, a lot of different alternatives to getting out of debt. Okay, so that's something that you can do your research on. I'm just putting it out there just for the time. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I'm just showing you what the alternative is. The mainstream is usually what goes against the non-popular, the unpopular stuff right here. So these are unpopular ways of either A, getting out of debt, increasing income, building wealth. This is unpopular stuff. And this is mainstream. You have debt snowball, debt avalanche, the fire movement, frugality, or minimalists right? The Millionaire Next Door, uh, Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, right? These are very practical for the most part, depending on where you, where your perspective is. You might say, look, being a minimalist is ridiculous, right? You might say that. You say, look, I'm not going to live on rice and beans. I'm just not. Why would I do that, right? You might just say that, or you might say, you know what? We have to do that because we've been mismanaging resources in the kingdom. So we must pay for our, what? Sins, right? We must account. We must have consequences for mismanagement. So some people will take a radical approach to putting themselves in a better financial position. And this has produced tons of results. So let me not discredit this. Doing debt stonewall, debt avalanche, it's going to produce results. The fire movement, it's going to produce results. Being frugal, cutting back, being a minim minimalist, you're going to have more money. Okay. It works. It's just a matter of how long will it work? And what kind of person will you come out? Will you become cheap, bitter, annoying to hang out with? Doesn't tip the waiter at the restaurant? Doesn't tip the bartender? Don't tip the valet guy? Don't tip the, the maid that does your hotel room? Are, are, are you gonna become, uh, you know, this tight person? And we don't want that. That's, you know, so you had good intentions, but you came out very tight, right, with your money. I don't like that. So sometimes people can become that way, right? And you see it. Right? Look at look at your mom, look at your dad. That's prime example number one, right? 
Look how tight they are with money. Look at your parents, look at your friends, look at the people in your inner circle that are not making more than you are or they're making less than you are. Look at how their attitudes is around money. They're only being shown the mainstream stuff. But then there's these other options that can do what that will do, but in a third of the time or half the time, okay? Then the other option here is the high risk, high reward option. I love this option. This is the startup, starting a business, creating value in the marketplace, stepping into your purpose and getting paid at an exponential rate. So instead of solving for debt, we're solving for income, increasing income. Fastest way to solve any problem around money, increase the friggin' income, right? So that's one way of looking at it. Sales, selling something, providing value in the marketplace, getting paid at an exponential rate, higher commissions, more than your hourly wage job, okay? And the mindset of 10X, taking your 5,000 a month income, 7,000, 10,000, whatever it is, times it by 10, you're in a whole different mindset, whole different uh, uh, environment, okay? So here are your options. Here are the tools, which you need to know about your numbers. I gave you the first resource about velocity banking in a crisis to understand how to implement this thing when there's a lot of uncertainty and volatility in the marketplace. I showed you a, an anti-velocity banking article, showed you, you know, all the different uh, uh, routes that we can go. Now, what I'd like to do is share with you some more resources that I've looked up personally that can notify and help those who are practicing velocity banking. So now I'm talking to those who are practicing velocity banking. You're doing this, you're getting results. Great, let's be aware of what's happening in the marketplace. For the most part, if you're a client of mine, your worry is very low because of how we operate when we're doing velocity banking. For example, when it comes to obtaining these debt tools, we typically go with local non-for-profit credit union banks, the, the federal credit unions, the bigger credit union banks, or your state credit union, or your local credit union. We start local, then we go state, then we go national, federal, and then finally big banks. Some people are practicing velocity banking with the bigger banks, credit cards, personal line of credit, business line of credit, and your HELOCs. If you're that person listening and you're doing velocity banking with a major bank, what I mean by that is they have branches all over the US in all 50 states pretty much. That makes them a major bank, major corporation. The likelihood of velocity banking getting disrupted in a market crash increases. Why? The major banks become over leveraged. They're loaning too much money. They don't have enough in reserves. So when they start to feel the pressure, they start looking at all of their accounts and they look for money that is either sitting inactive. That's usually probably the first place. For example, if you have a $50,000 line of credit that you haven't used in nine months or a year or a HELOC that you haven't used in a while, they could either without notice, without notification, lower the credit limit or lock it up, freeze it, cancel it for inactivity. They just simply close your account for inactivity, lack of use on your end, the user. They do that so they have more liquidity. They don't need to keep that money there for you to go use it. They're, they're taking it back. Very simple. Then there are situations where people that are doing velocity banking and they're over leveraging themselves. What is over leveraging? People that are borrowing 80, 90, 100% of their credit limit. So if you have $100,000 and you did a chunk of 90 grand, you are over leveraged, my friend, okay? That may not be the most effective thing for you to be doing because if the value of your home tanks by 20, 30, 40%, whatever it is, that could affect how much actual home equity value you have in the property, right? So we wanna pay attention to that. Am I over, am I, you know, using this concept a little too much? Am I creating an illusion for myself? Like everything is fine. This is the time. This is the video for those that are practicing velocity banking that aren't necessarily my clients. Maybe you're working with someone else. Here is your warning. And I'm going to give you some resources for you to check out some YouTube channels to check out. So you can be aware. Oh, okay. My coach never told me that there are risks with velocity banking that, you know, it's, 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 it's all, uh, you know, 
sunshine and, and flowers and berries and you know it's all great my, my financial velocity banking expert coach guru didn't tell me what to do in a crash in a market crash again got a whole playlist that i've been creating since 2019 and 2018 that's as far back as my youtube channel started summer of 2018 that's when the youtube channel started from there up until now i have a playlist you go right to my youtube channel or you look in the comments velocity banking in a crisis it's going to map it out for you step by step I promise you. You, you you can't go wrong it's taking out all the guessing work right and just sticking to the facts so very important stuff let's look at some resources and a couple people i want you to write down first guy michael burry I want you to write that down michael burry is 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 a very very smart individual uh, not too heavy on creating content. He's, he's in the shadows. He, he doesn't, he doesn't have his own YouTube channel. As far as I'm concerned, this guy's on Twitter. He makes a couple of tweets. It goes freaking viral. Why? This guy predicted the 08 crash, 0708 crash. Okay. Michael Burry, the hedge fund manager who famously bet against the country's housing market, 2008, recently proclaimed in a since deleted tweet, bond and stock markets depend on a fed stripped of all credibility. Not his first warning. All hype speculation is doing is drawing in retail before the mother of all crashes. So he's calling it the mother of all crashes. If any of you guys watch Andre Zik or uh, what's his name? Graham Stephan, meet Kevin. And then there's another guy. There's a YouTube channel called Millennial Money. They're calling it the everything crash. It's imminent. It is likely. I'm not saying it will or won't happen. I'm saying it's likely to happen because I'm I'm listening to to certain voices in in this space, right? So you can read this article. Very very interesting. Uh, this is what it's titled: Michael Burry, Mother of All Crashes. Warning is still in play, but here are three stocks he's bullish on. So I'm not going to go into like the stocks or anything. I just want you to you know check that article out, write his name down, and research the guy and see his track record. So. So you can understand what his credibility is. The next person, Ray Dalio. Okay. Another, uh, uh, I think a hedge fund guy, this multi-billionaire, this guy is no joke. Okay. He says, I've seen a lot of bubbles in my time and I've studied them even more in history. I systemized, uh, what I learned into a bubble indicator that I monitor to help give me perspective on many markets around the world. Okay. And so that's the second name I'd like you to write down. Ray Dalio it says, are we in a stock market bubble? Okay. For the 65 plus people watching he says, I've seen a lot of bubbles in my time and I've studied them more in, in, in history. So I know what I mean by a bubble and I systemize it into a bubble indicator that I monitor to help give me perspective on each market. We now use it at most markets we are in. I want to show you how it works and what it is now showing for us stocks. What I mean by a bubble is an unsustainable high price and how I measure it is with the following six measures. How high are prices relative to traditional measures? Are prices discounting unsustainable conditions? How many new buyers, those who weren't previously in the market, have entered the market? How broadly bullish is sentiment? Are purchases being financed by high leverage? Have buyers made exceptionally uh, extended forward purchases, built inventory, contracted forward purchases to speculate or protect themselves against future price gains. This is interesting stuff. Now I'm going to see if I can find something real quick on Instagram here. Boom. Here you go. Go to Grant Cardone's post. Look what he says. says White House says inflation is, is a high class problem. How inflation is affecting you. Rental cars have gone up 43% from September, 2020 to September, 2021. Gas prices have gone up 42%. Used cars, 24%. Bacon, 19%. Hotel prices, 18%. Beef, 18%. Pork, 13%. Eggs, 13%. Televisions, 13%. Kids' shoes, right? Back to school, up 12% increase. Furniture, need new furniture? It's 11% more. Need a new car? It's 9% more. Need to buy chicken for the family? Boyo, hey, it's 8% more. Apples, you want apples? 8% more. You gonna go, you gonna go eat out with the fam? It's 5% more. Electricity is 5% more. So you're living, we're in an environment now of hyperinflation. It is here, okay? It is 
here, <laughs> depending on what state you're in, it might you might be feeling it uh, very heavily. Okay, it's here, here to stay. It ain't pretty. Um, a lot of people are gonna get smoked, wiped out, and it's gonna hurt. My goal during this session here this evening, because we're approaching the first hour, what I want to also do is provide two solutions, two solutions on how you and I can both operate velocity banking in a crisis or whatever financial strategy that you are implementing in a market crash, hyperinflation, stocks going bananas, meme stocks, uh, meme cryptocurrencies, whatever it is, how we can stay focused on what our goals are, what our missions are, what our values, morals, ethics, right? So that we don't lose focus. We're going to focus on that. I'm going to provide two solutions. I'm going to approach it two different ways. One solution is going to be very logical, very logical solution, right? Then I'm going to attack that logical solution with faith, okay? So like I said earlier, I like to make faith logical. So I know when I'm talking to people on YouTube right now, for the 74 plus people watching now, I know that I'm talking to non-believers, believers, and everything in between, right? So for my non-believers, my in-betweeners, my I don't knows, my somewhat, somewhat not, we're approaching this very logically. For my kingdom citizens, believers, Bible believers, I got a solution, right? For us to operate in a crisis that your church is not teaching for the most part. They're teaching you to tithe and to trust in the Lord that everything's going to be okay. And that the, uh, uh, what is that? What's that verse about the, you know, the wicked's wealth is, is laid up for the righteous, but for the last 2000 plus years, the wicked still got the wealth, right? So, uh, it, it's time for us to get real on the faith side. I'm, I'm specifically talking to my kingdom citizens, those that believe, I'm not talking to my non-believers. In fact, I love talking to you guys more than my, my, my Christian brothers and sisters because they get so clouded in the faith part. For my non-believers and my in-betweeners, my somewhats, my somewhat nots, it's so easy. I just give you the principles. I say, look, just do X, Y, and Z, ba, ba, ba. Done. You're making money right away. I talk to my, uh, you know, hardcore, spiritual, faith, believing people. I love you. Trust me, I do, but this is this is tough love right now. Come from a 25 year old kid. Look, I don't know much about much. Okay, I got a lot to learn. I have a lot to give. When I'm talking to my faith people, it is extremely frustrating that you have the word, the absolute truth. You know the scriptures back and forth, like the back of your hands. You can cite scripture. You can speak in tongues. You can worship at the top of your lungs. Yet you are broke financially and it's miserable. And then I talk to my non-believers over here and I'm like, you know, you might as well get saved. I mean, you're, you're operating like a freaking king or a queen. You might as well get saved, dude. Let's solve the spiritual side of yourself. Like you're doing everything correct. You're following kingdom principles. You're operating like a king or a queen. You have ethics, you have morals, you have values. You care about your family. You care about people. I mean, you're doing the, you're doing the two main uh, uh, co uh, commandments that Jesus gave, love thy neighbor. Right? Are you doing that that main one? The second one is what you're missing is to love God with your your full uh, heart and soul and uh, and don't worship any other gods but Him. That's the only missing component you got. But other than that, you're killing it. So it's like there's got to be like a little switch, right? Non-believers, somewhat's in betweeners, right? Try to get your truth, right? That's what you're searching for, anyways. And then from my believers, you need to hang out with some more non-believers, and you need to hang out with these business people. You need to get in their heads. You need to talk to them. You need to network. You need to build relationships with these people because it wasn't too long ago that you were also wicked, a sinner, right? Not of the faith. There was a time where you did not believe, okay? Or you went through some uh, horrific tragedy and that, you know, brought you to Christ. You need to talk to these people because I'm not seeing the material being taught in the church, which is why I, your personal finance geek, has to go over here and uh, and pay these people at high freaking rates so I can get the ex information, extract it, and then give it to you for free, right? And then it's up to you, depending on what you do with it. Right? It's up to you. So let's go back to the resources, okay? Let's go back so that we, we stay on task. We stay on task. So Ray Dalio, Michael Burry, look up those two. So you get educated on market crashes, market bubbles, 
volatility in the marketplace. So you can do things in, in, in your own personal economy to protect yourself. This is the logical approach right now. These are the logical solutions. You got to get educated. That's step one. Step two is we have to curate the information. There's a lot of information out there when the information age, right? So there's going to be correct information, wrong information, in between information. Hopefully with the research that I've done, I've curated it for you. And then you get to curate my information I just gave you by reading it and evaluating it and, uh, uh, and continue to go through your process on how you validate information. Okay. Next person I want you to look at. There's a YouTube channel called I allegedly. Okay. Look that up. I allegedly. And I want you to go to a uh, his, his YouTube video called beware of bank closures and credit cards getting cut off. Okay. Watch that video. Um, nice guy from a couple of videos that I've watched so far. Very educational. Um, definitely gave me some perspective and he has a laundry list. Look at this, a laundry list of resources of everything that he mentioned in the video. You can go fact check it pretty cool. So I like that. So I actually did it, right? I actually did it. And his video was beware of bank closures. So here's something pretty interesting. Since 2008, banks have closed over 13,000 bank branches across the United States. That's a loss of over 14%, right? That's pretty interesting. The five states that lost the largest share of branches from 2017 to 2020 were Alaska, Oregon, New Jersey, Michigan, and North Carolina. No states saw the number of branch branches increase. So not one state has increased in the number of branches. Pretty interesting. SunTrust and BB&T, which merged, um, I'm not sure if it was 2020 or this, it says this year, to form Truist. They closed a total of 565 branches in the four year period, or a 16.5% of their combined branches. Pretty interesting stuff. Okay. So check that out. Um, and you can find that resource. Okay. Truist says to close 35 branches in North Carolina plans to consolidate downtown Winston-Salem retail presence. Pretty interesting. Another one, Montana reinstates measures allowing emergency bank closures. What does that mean? I don't really know, but it sounds like there was a protocol for the state of Montana that blocked banks from just randomly closing without notice. And the state of Montana has released that protocol. Hmm. Why'd they do that? Who cut a deal with who? Right. And then here's a very good resource. Uh, when would a bank decide to close your bank account? This could be checking account, saving account, um, credit lines. Uh, and this is usually it's, it's inactivity, uh, fraudulent, high risk of, of fraudulent transactions, things like that. Okay. So these are some very good things to be aware of for those that are practicing the concept, planning to practice the concept, right? Very, very good stuff. I gave you solutions and steps logically on whether or not to do velocity banking. Look at the good, the bad, the ugly. Take a look at the playlist, velocity banking in a crisis, how to get yourself prepared. Gave you the options in terms of whether to pay for a service like one-to-one -one coaching, online course, a software, showed you the different price range, right? You can do it for free. Then I showed you the mainstream ways, the high risk, high reward way the alternative ways, the debt tools that you can use to properly implement the concept, the four major numbers, how I do that. Now I'm going to approach it the, the, the faith route here. And again, I'm, I'm not exactly giving scripture here. Rather, I am talking on the structure of which kingdom citizens like you that are watching that are believers. For those of you who are watching that are non-believers, hey, Take it for what it is. I think it'd be very helpful for you because again, I'm not going to approach it where like I'm going to start, you know, talking in tongues to you and uh, citing scripture. It's not exactly going to be my approach to to this because I I want you to capture the information and I want to share with you the structure of the kingdom that you can potentially experience. And yes, it does come with you do need to read the word and obviously understand scripture to understand what the creator designed for heaven 
to be experienced here on earth, okay? Now, I recently came across this solution. So if I'm incorrect about this, I'll be the first to make a video and let you know, hey, I was wrong. If I am right, I will continue to make content about it to teach you all. And if I need to make tweaks and alignment to fix my language and wording, if I need to, to find the right scriptures to, to make this make sense, um, the right foundations, then I will do that so that I can continue to learn. So if I am out of alignment at any point in time and you know that I'm out of alignment, reach out to me. Hey, Denzel, love what you're doing. You're helping a lot of people, but you said X, Y, and Z, and I wanna make sure you tweak that language so you get better so that you don't lead people astray. I don't wanna do that at 25 years old. I wanna make as many mistakes now, early, while I'm young, and correct those mistakes so that I can get closer and closer to absolute truth, okay? That is my main concern. When I'm working with my clients, when I'm talking to you guys in here on YouTube, all I'm doing is fishing all day long. I'm just fishing for you. I'm fishing. I'm, I'm fishing. I'm, I'm throwing marketing terms that attract you, how to make more money, how to pay off your debt really fast, right? Velocity banking, infinite banking, right? all these, you know, marketing. That's all it is. Marketing terms. Once I got you hooked, boom, you start watching the content. You start getting results. You start doing better things with your money. You spend less than what you make. You cash flow more. You fix your credit. You pay off debt. You start a business. You start cash flowing. You tax your income. Wonderful. You do all those things. And then we get deeper together in our conversations. And then we start talking kingdom. We start talking purpose. We start talking legacy, missions. How do we live forever? All right? That's one of my things. I, I want to know how to live forever. So far, there's only one way that makes sense. I've heard about the reincarnation way. Doesn't make sense to me. I don't know if I want to come back as a bird. I don't know if I want to come back as a cow. I don't know if I want to come back as a, as a, as a lizard. I, I don't know. So I'm not necessarily too interested in, in that route, but that would be a way to live forever. Maybe. Am I a different person? Do I, do I forget who I was and now I'm a new character? What is it? Am I, you know, is it respawn like a video game? What are we talking about? So I haven't been able to figure that one out yet. It, it doesn't seem reasonable. It, I can't make sense of it. I can't make it logical. If I can't make it logical, if I can't write it out, it's just not going to make sense to me. So when it comes to living forever, fulfilling a purpose, having a legacy for many, many years, having ethics, morals, and standards, so far, this kingdom thing has been um, very, just, I've been very obsessed with trying to find the truth in the things that I do. That's why I spend so much time questioning the very concepts that I teach you guys, which is why I, I bring you material that is anti-velocity banking, anti-infinite banking, so you can see what the other side is saying and see, are they coming from a valid position? Are they giving good tips? And how can I merge that with what Denzel's saying and get the perfect best of both worlds? Does that make sense? So with that being said, I wanna talk about the uh, solution in a market crash. I wanna ask you all, have any of you ever heard of a 508 C1A? Any of you heard of this? Please comment below. Do you know what it is? Say yes or no. I don't know what it is. Yes, I do know what it is. 508 C1A. I believe I may have found a missing component to my kingdom strategy that I share with my my clients. For the most part, you guys know me as a what? Velocity banking guru, a financial say expert guru, a financial consultant. You're coming to me, you're hiring me because you're having trouble with money. And then I provide different solutions on how we can handle that. And then you get to a state of security where you're now grounded in rules and fundamentals, right? Principles around your money. We, we solve for them, we actually implement it, and we get it going. Then for some of you, a good portion of you that are believers, we're trying to operate closer and closer to God's kingdom in everything that we do, right? And I have been, you know, doing research and trying to figure out ways for me to experience the kingdom more and more here on earth while I'm living. So I'm seeing a lot of comments, no, right? Mary says no, Cedric, no, Bonbon, no. Patel, no. Jen, no. 
it's a no for me too. I've never heard of a 508C1A. Now I'm gonna make a bold statement here. Um, and like I said, if I'm wrong, let it be now. Lord, guide me. I'm asking the Holy Spirit, work through my vocal cords. If I'm wrong, correct me, okay? But I believe a 508C1A is how we all in a community can experience the kingdom of heaven here on earth. It is the, it is the structure of the kingdom that can potentially be expressed amongst all the citizens equally according to their works and their faith, okay? So 508C1A, let me give you a little taste of what I have been experiencing living in the kingdom. Let me give you an example. There are a few people I've been doing business with for multiple years now. I'm going to name them. Steve Parisi over at IBC Global. He helps people design uh, high cash value life insurance policies. Alex Albaran helps my clients and viewers do their Facebook ads, email marketing, maybe maybe website, uh, uh, helps you start. Um, there's coaching, how to increase your sales, sales scripts. The guy's a beast. Brittany Green, many of you know, she helps you with repairing, restoring, or building your credit, your personal credit. Sebastian Boyer, business credit, restoring, building, establishing business credibility. He's also um, a, a resource for Velocity Banking, knows it pretty well. He's also a resource for infinite banking, knows it pretty well. These are four kingdom citizens. Okay, these are four individuals that operate like kings and queens, right? That I have been doing business with for quite some time now. And one way that we all can be recession proof, okay? One way to be recession proof is to build connections, relationships with other like-minded people like yourself, okay? Now, one thing that has happened in the last year, year and a half, with all of those people I've mentioned, Alex, Brittany, Sebastian, Steve Parisi, Brittany Green, um, I've paid these people thousands of dollars, anywhere from hundreds to thousands of dollars to work with them exclusively, one-to-one, -to, -one, to grow, grow with them and learn with them. But over time, because of the relationship that I built with them, I don't pay a dime to get access to Alex Albaran, to Brittany Green, to Steve Parisi, to Sebastian Boyer. These are all business owners that offer products and services that cost money, that over the years increase in value. It's called inflation. So if I don't have to pay that person, that makes that particular product or service inflation proof. Why? Because now I don't have to come out of pocket with my worthless piece of trash called fiat currency. That's worth less than if I would have pulled it out three, four, five years ago. It's now worth less and I got to pull out more to pay for the same service. So a way around that is through either option one, bartering, option two, exchanging value for value. So because I honor and I glorify these people that I work with, they develop such a strong relationship, connection, friendship, business. I send them business. They send me business. I shout them out. They shout me out. I don't have to pay them a dime for what they do. They don't pay me a dime. They don't have to pay to get access to me. Okay. For my clients, those of you who are watching, uh, say Terry, for example, who's in the house, lifetime client. She paid one time for a service I provide, financial, coaching, consulting, accountability. She paid one time to get access to me for life. No questions asked. So for however long Terry or I live, she never has to hire another financial coach or consultant ever again. Why? She has access to one. She has the keys to my kingdom up here, my mind. She has access to the keys to the kingdom so that she can do more with her resources here on earth and experience heaven, utopia, paradise, whatever you want to call it. I say experiencing heaven here on earth, which is freedom, financial freedom, happiness, liberty, pursuit of happiness. I mean, you, you go down the line, right? So that is a super, I'm telling you, very effective way to be recession-proof, depression-proof, 
inflation proof. Develop relationships with people, sow seed into them. Expect nothing in return, right? And when you have that mentality of expecting nothing in return, but simply giving from the heart, it is a universal fact. It is also a kingdom rule in the constitution that you will be replenished more than what you gave. If you ever visit a kingdom in the past, you look at history, whenever a, a king or a queen enters into another kingdom, someone else's domain, that king or queen, or even citizen that enters into another domain, another territory, they bring gifts. It's protocol to bring gifts for that person. Why? You're giving glory to that king of that territory, of that domain, or that queen. You're giving glory. You're setting the first impression. Your etiquette, your ethics are showing. You're impressing upon the king or queen. You are putting pressure, pressure on the king, on the queen to return a gift so that you don't leave their kingdom empty handed. That does not look good. If the king or queen that you visited, you brought a gift, right? And then you leave that domain empty handed, right? That doesn't make sense. So it is this constant reciprocation, value for value, very unique way. A lot of people aren't teaching this on how to, you know, remain from recession, depression, hyperinflation, volatility in the marketplace, loss of job. Like imagine if you, I'm sure many of you have lost jobs, you've lost opportunities, you've lost money. And in those trying times, you may have had to reach out to somebody for help and they either a helped you or b they did not help you if you built strong relationships in good seasons of abundance and prosperity when winter comes when it is a slow season a hard season those same people that you serve you poured into the likelihood of them feeding you in a time of crisis increases and if they don't well then that is a what you now get to evaluate that character say oh whoa whew, i've been feeding into your kingdom we've been going back and forth and all of a sudden you left me to the wolves unprotected naked what are you doing right so now you get to evaluate who your uh compadres are you get to evaluate who your brothers and sisters are you get to evaluate your confidants your partners okay when i was in a bad season I had an Alex, I had a Steve Parisi, I had a Sebastian, I had a Brittany, I had, you know, other people in my life that are close to me that I was able to lean on for a temporary period of time. Did not cost me a dime. Why? Because I deposited seeds of glory, seeds of love, seeds of happiness, joy, seeds of partnership, seeds of you know, exchange of value and wisdom and knowledge, business, money, exchanging money, right? Uh, so this is a, I, I want to just stress on it. That's a taste, a taste of what the kingdom is like. With a 508C1A, this is interesting. With a 508C1A, the, the potential to fully experience the kingdom is something that I frankly just need to spend a lot of time with. So here is a website called destiny508.com forward slash 508c1a. It's, a, it's like a blog uh, that they created, right? So let's, yeah, let's just go here. It says, what are the advantages of a 508c1a? In the past, the church or faith-based organization was seen as the source of moral and religious standards and had a great influence on the shaping of the culture in the United States. The founding fathers who wrote the constitution believed this so emphatically, emphatically, am I saying that right? They placed in the first amendment, the freedom of speech, religion, press, assembly, and citizens, the ability to petition the government if they did something that blocked any of these freedoms. The church has the greatest opportunity to again, make an impact on American society through the 508C1A designation. The advantages of being 508C1A FBO include rights guaranteed under federal law 26 US section uh, 6033A3A. Very interesting. 
you are tax exempt and can give tax deductible receipts or donations. You have full freedom of speech, including but not limited to politics, referendums, initiatives, and candidates. Mandatory accepted from reporting does not file a tax return. Under a 508c1a corporation kingdom, you don't even have to file a tax return. Whoa. Mandatory accepted from rendering under oath such statements make such other returns and uh, comply with such rules and regulations as the secretary IRS may from time to time prescribe. Okay. Not subject to public scrutiny due to non-reporting. Not required to file for non-profit status with the IRS. Simplified filing process. Ladies and gentlemen, this is this blew my mind. You mean to tell me that I could potentially be a part of some kind of structure like a 508 C1A where I have freedom, full freedom of religion, full freedom, expression of press assembly. Uh, I don't have to worry about the woke people. I don't have to worry about cancel culture. I don't have to worry about my government censoring me. I don't have to worry about my government taxing me. <laughs> I don't have to worry uh, about lack of resources because I can be in a kingdom that has an infinite amount of resources. Oh my goodness. This is this is some tough stuff. Comment, how is this making you feel so far? Okay, comment below. Let's see, find some other stuff. So what are some of the benefits of being a 501C1A instead of a 501C? Most of us know what a 501 uh, uh, a C is a nonprofit. That's how most of our churches are operated, but almost nobody knows about 508C1A and that's literally in the tax code. It's very interesting. Um, what I what I want to do is I need help. I need help researching. That's what I need help in. I need help researching and validating this information. Okay. I need I need help with that. There's a, a, a channel I want you all to look up for me. Okay. It's called the Financially Lit Podcast right here. Connected with this gentleman here not too long ago, literally a couple days ago. And this is a, a, a person claiming to be in the kingdom. This is a kingdom guy. Very interested. He's got some really good content here. Fairly new YouTube channel. Only been around a year, according to this. And he is a part of a 508C1A called the iCovest Academy. Okay. Check out this website, iCovest.academy. I'll put that in the chat for you guys. You can check that out for me. I want to do some research, okay? I want you guys to do some research for me. This is new information. I don't know everything, but I feel like I am so close to experiencing the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So close. I feel like I'm so close. I've, you know, I've looked at so many different Christian denominations. I've looked at the Prosperity Bible. I've looked at Mormonism and Jehovah's Witness. I've looked at Seven Day Adventists. I've looked at. Uh, what's the other one? You know, I've looked at the uh, the evangelical Christians. I've looked at um, You know the was a Jewish religion. I've looked at Buddhism. I've looked at Islam I've looked at you know, I've, I've done however much research I can and I have not seen a structure yet like this according to the person that I spoke to that you saw on the YouTube channel I put the link I put the link there for you to check out financially lit podcast you can read you can reach out to this person he's, he's accessible his name's nicholas shout out to nicholas and uh, uh and your youtube channel financially lit podcast i watched some of your material really good stuff can't wait to have a follow-up conversation with you i'm telling you how excited i am right now because i think we're we're well, i'm getting close you're already fully experiencing but i'm getting close so I'm, that was just me talking to uh nicholas for that quick quick 30 seconds right there but i think i found something and I just want to validate it. I, I, I need help, okay, from all of you, okay? I want you to look at all this stuff, all the resources I sent, watch the replay so you can go back and see the links. 508C1A is a structure that is community driven with the right leadership, the right principles, the right mandate, the, the truth in, in the word could be a way to fully access resources from the Holy Spirit, boom, here on earth, bam, understand that part, the spiritual side, the faith part. But mathematically, if I can invest and pay no taxes, if I can exchange business with you and pay no taxes, if I can earn money 
with you, through you, for you, and pay no taxes. Do you know how much more margin we have for profit when there's no taxes involved? Number one. Do you know how much our margins increase when we don't have to worry about inflation? Imagine operating in a kingdom where the prices of apples stood the same or relatively the same. Imagine where you can operate in a kingdom where you can, you can get and receive sound financial advice and counseling at rates that are outside of the world, but are, 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 are based off of a different economic system where no one is oppressed. Everybody has access to the keys. Everybody has access to the keys. Everybody works according to their, their faith and their works. And you share resources in a community like of a structure. And there's one ruler, that's the man upstairs. And everybody recognizes that 100% of everything in the world is not ours, right? So I will say this multiple times, the seven figures that I've produced in revenue to date in my business, the, uh, the cash value life insurance policies that I have, the velocity banking that I've done, the credit score that I have, every dollar that I have is not mine. I'm a steward. I manage it very effectively, might I add. And I am blessed with more because I'm putting pressure on a king that claims to be the almighty, all-knowing God of all gods, creator of all things, right? The alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, okay? For the 64 people watching right now, for those of you that believe and don't believe, and the in-betweeners and the I don't knows, I'm, by me declaring this, I'm putting pressure on this infinite God, this, this so-called God. If he's real, right? If the Bible is true, if God is real, and I am professing information that would put his reputation at risk, guess who has to show up? This so-called infinite being, this so-called creator of all things, God of all gods, Alpha and Omega, right? Author of all things, creator, owner of all things, universe, all of it, the stars, everything. The more pressure I put on, on this being, on this God, the more pressure I put on him, the more he has to do to secure my freedoms to secure my wealth to secure everything that i do that that it does not become a failure because i literally just said that from the day of starting my business in summer of 2018 to to date it's november 11th 2021 every single dollar that i've produced none of it is mine it is all his the father the king of all kings it is his jehovah right a lot of different names God the Father, Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rafi, uh, what, what are all the names? There's a lot of names, right? Name them, comment them. Elohim, right? A lot of different names. Yahweh, you know, I don't know. I'm learning. To me, it's like different tongues, different words for each language to, you know, Allah, right? God, it's just different uh, uh, native tongues that are expressing the all, the almighty. Okay, so if that's true, I just declare that he owns it all. I'm simply managing it. And because I'm managing it so well, according to scripture, his word, his mandates, his principles, if I am born again, if I have received the blood of Christ, if I have the blood covenant, right? If I am saved, born again, I've repented, simply means to change your way of thinking, by the way, repent and acknowledge the almighty and profess it in front of man. How many people watching? 66, 70 plus people watching? Uh-oh. He is now under pressure. I've released, I've released the pressure off of me. I said, God, now you gotta go do it. You have to have me succeed now because the number one way a king or a queen can express their glory and wealth is through their citizens. The better the citizens live, the more glory the king, king or queen receives, point blank. If the king or queen's citizens live poor and they're oppressed and they're slaves, not too many people are gonna to wanna to visit that kingdom. There's a fine line between a dictator and a king, right? A king leads with love, not force. A dictator leads with force and fear, right? It's a fine line. You can either lead with force, you can lead through power, you can lead through love, influence, winning hearts, and giving people access to everything that you own because you're a servant leader, right? So interesting stuff here, 508C1A, that is 
uh, it's a logical solution, is it not? Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm tying faith, making it logical. A 508C1A is a faith-based organization that operates anywhere in the world they so please. And no government can tax them. No government can censor them. No government can take their freedom. No government can 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 uh, uh, take their freedom of of speech and, and engagement in politics and in, in, uh, uh, upbringing of candidates. So there are a couple of examples, according to this gentleman that I spoke of, some very very powerful 508c1as, FBOs in the marketplace today. You have the Vatican, right? You got the Vatican Bank, and you got the Mormon Church. These are two faith-based organizations that are not taxed. When you're a part of that organization, you also experience no tax, if I'm not mistaken, could be wrong, I don't know. But if this is true, that means anyone in it, you're, you're, you're cooperatively investing in things, and then the distributions to all the citizens are not taxed. There's a barter system in it where either it's through gold or silver, or maybe it's a native currency that gets developed, uh-oh, in that system. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Am I, am I going crazy here? This is the company this, this iCovest Academy, this is an organization that reached out to me. The person representing this organization uh, is uh, Nicholas Gonzalez, the Financially Lit podca uh, YouTube channel and podcast right here, okay? This is who I'm in communication with. They're claiming to be of the kingdom. They believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that, he, that only through him can we receive eternal life, right? They believe that God's the Father, Holy Spirit, the Trinity, they, they believe in that. Okay, great. They're a faith-based organization. They're recognized by the United Nations. Um, this, this looks very legit from the research that I've done so far. And I have a conversation with uh, the gentleman coming up, so I'm, I'm very excited. But if this is true, if this is the way that I can truly experience fully 100% the kingdom here on earth, ladies and gentlemen, I will likely drop everything that I'm doing. I will likely drop everything that I'm doing and dive into this, likely. It may not happen overnight, but it can certainly happen over time where I just dedicate my whole life talking about the kingdom and sharing with people how to experience the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Because if I don't have to worry about being censored and silenced, oh my goodness, do you know how much authority you have? Um, now, here's the thing, here's the flip side of the coin. Here's the flip side. As great as this is, what do we know? What do men, humankind, what do mankind tend to do with perfect things? Destroy them, mess them up, sin, immorality, right? Runs rampant. We are, we are fallen beings, okay? We're all sinners. We all do bad stuff. We all make mistakes. So the flip side of the coin is that even in an organization like this, right? It can potentially be contaminated. How? By the people, by the leaders. So if the structure... Let's say we all got involved in a 508C1A, right? Let's just say for the 72 people of us watching, right? At the moment. Let's say every single one of us started a 501, 508C1A. One of them, right? Just us, uh, boom, all together. Great. Let's say you all, 72 people watching, identify me as the leader of the organization. So now I'm at the top. And then one level below is all 72 of you. You're all leaders. And then anyone else that comes into the organization um, is going to have to do A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, X, Y, Z, hop up and down, do 10,000 backflips and 5,000 push-ups, and they have to give a million dollars and they have to do all this stuff just to get equal access to the people that, say, originally established the, the, the kingdom structure. That is an indication, a red flag. Hey, the power is all at the top and not at the bottom and not equally distributed according to works and, and, and faith. I'm assuming that would be the, the system. The model or according to the anointing or according to the spiritual gifts that each person has so if you ever find yourself in a type of a structure and you dive deep and you get involved with a 508 c1a and you notice that you've got to go through five million loopholes you know just to get access to say the main leader right say it was me just say i get in this thing i start it and i and i recruit you all but i'm at the top so I have all the access to all the wealth and all I get to dictate everything and da da da. What does that make me? I now start to become what? A God in there. And if this leader is not careful, if I'm not careful, who can I end up like? Saul in the Bible, King Solomon, King David. Who can I end up like? Moses, 
you know, these great leaders that fall. So, and even today, you, you, you can see leaders in the world today where greed took them over or pride, one of the two, pride or greed, want too more, you want too much for yourself, you lose track of what the kingdom is all about, right? So when we're researching, when we're discovering things, let's challenge, let's ask questions, let's dialogue, let's, let's hold each other accountable. Hey, Denzel, I heard what you said in this video. You said this, eh, might want to tweak that word. Okay, thank you, appreciate it, I'm going to improve. Okay, let's say Denzel, when he's 35 years old, all of a sudden, he's, he's doing a little too flashy flashy. What's going on? You know, be aware of that. I, I've told my clients um, in my private networking events, private networking meetings that I hold with you guys that are clients. I say, look, the moment you see me going on a little me, me, me train and a pride train, cut me off. Call me out immediately. That is dangerous. Coach me. Pull me aside. Hey, Denzel, love what you've done. You're doing great. But pay attention. I, I saw you said this the other day. You took a little too much credit or... I saw you did this. Um, I, hey, I'm not saying anything. I'm just, I, I got a little discernment. I got a little, you know, the Holy Ghost talked to me and said, correct him before he falls off a cliff into a pit, right? So I want that from you guys. I want you guys to hold me accountable when I'm looking up this stuff. All right. So let me look at some comments and then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to close it out a little bit here. Denzel, you didn't mention Catholicism. Oh, my bad. Uh, that... <laughs> I was raised Catholic, so my bad for not including that. But yes, gone through the Catholic Church, uh, wasn't it? Look into Liberty Aid Academy. Okay, 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 you are on the right track. Cool, ask, seek, knock, yep. Okay, okay, uh, I don't know if this is correct thinking, but I'm wondering if what I've seen is a 508C1A Islamic or maybe Indian faith-based. They operate within their community, all business, religion, within their people and very wealthy. Okay, guys, let me tell you something. She's absolutely right. There are cultures in the world today that are operating in a kingdom structure, but they don't necessarily worship the king of all kings. They may not worship God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, recognize the Trinity, but they have the structure. That's what we need to understand here. Most Christians do not have the structure. You got the word. Bravo. You got the word. You understand it. You understand truth. You can cite scripture back and forth. You can, you can talk me, you know, off a wall about how God saved you and, and your, your tragic story and all this stuff, but you're still financially broke because you don't have the structure, right? So, and this is where you've heard me in other videos, how I study and I review and I look at other cultures because I'm like, look, that's a king. That's a queen. They may not believe in what I believe, but dang, they're living pretty good. They're living according to how my God is expressing how his kingdom citizens ought to live. They're living that way. Let me give you a few examples. Look, the Mormon church, man, loaded with cash. Look at the Jewish culture. Go to Long Island, okay? Go to uh, maybe maybe Pennsylvania, maybe, uh, yeah, my goodness, there are areas up north, all Jews, all Jewish. You, you ever seen a bar mitzvah? How much they spend? Oh my God. Uh, pff, my goodness. Wish I had a party like that when I was 12, 10. My goodness, they go all out. I'm like, where do they get the money from? So there are cultures like Jewish people, like Mormons, like the Asian communities, like the Italians, okay? They're operating under kingdom structure. They may not have the kingdom mandate or the belief system that Christians believe, but they have the structure. They're experiencing loads and loads of abundance and prosperity and wealth. If you were born Jewish, you immediately have access to resources that other cultures do not. If you were born Chinese, Japanese. There are structures, organizations that are specific to Chinese and Japanese people. They have a structure. I live in South Florida. Every single plaza I've ever been in, in South Florida to date so far, has a Chinese restaurant, has a Chinese or Japanese massage parlor, nails, every plaza. How 
are they able to do that? They got a structure. Regardless of their faith and belief, they have a structure. Is it this? Possibly. I don't know. But I can tell you within that structure, they only borrow from each other. They don't borrow from Fargo. They don't borrow from Morgan. They don't borrow from Chase. They don't borrow from Bank of America. They borrow from their culture, their own last names. I'm Puerto Rican and Colombian. I've never heard of this structure before explained in my in my culture, in my community. We don't know about that. That's not our culture. We don't teach that. We teach coquito, reggaeton, salsa, merengue, bachata, right? We teach the fun stuff. We teach, uh, you know, welfare checks, WIC, right? You gotta go get the WIC check on, on Tuesday and then on Friday, you gotta get the welfare and then you gotta get a stimulus check and then you need a tax return. Okay, you gotta go to Tito over here for this. And you gotta go to the bodega and blah, blah, blah. That's what we teach, but we don't have the structure. All of, I have no problem with my culture. No problem at all. I love how I, the, the culture I was born into, love it. I came out the womb dancing, apparently, okay? So what happens when you're Puerto Rican? But I never received the, the structure. If I could tie the culture into the structure, I never have to be a victim of any other oppressor, of any other whatever you want to call it. I never have to worry ever again, right? So you are, Br Brianne or Brianna, Sylvester, what you said, definitely on cue. It's on point. You are correct. Uh, there are other communities, other structures operating like this. They have their own native currency. They have their own banking system. They borrow from each other at 0%. Ugh, my goodness. I'm, they're recession proof, inflation proof, tax proof. You name it. They're tight, man. They're tight. And a structure is what I believe many Christians, faith, Bible believers are missing. And we're not teaching it in the church. Missing out. The church is missing out on a great opportunity to radically shift culture in here in the United States to go from civilly unrest to united. Wonderful opportunity if we, if we waste it. I don't know. Kingdom crypto. Yeah, that might be cool. Being recognized by the UN is nothing special to me. However, I'm excited about the opportunity. Okay. Dude, I don't know. You know, that's that could be like a sales pitch, right? Hey, you know, Bobby, we're recognized by the United Nations. Listen, there's only three, four of us, handful on hand. You know, we're kingdom oriented. Da, da, da. That's why I'm bringing this up because I don't know. I'm 25. I don't know. But those of you that are double my age, maybe can see through things, have some higher discernment level, can pray over this and expose, you know, like get closer to the truth. OK, are the religious orders considered having the 508? Uh, C1A. Are the religious orders considered? Okay. Uh, explain a little more. Give me a little more. I don't know what you mean by that. Can a man pressure almighty guy? Fine line between seeking kingdom living and prosperity based faith. Yes. So no, that's me being funny, right? So can a man pressure God? I don't know if I've ever seen any scripture that talks about that, but I know of a prayer of a petition. I've done a video on this where I talk about petitioning the government. Let me go back to 508C1A and let me show you what I mean here, All right? So let's go back, 508C1A and citizen. Okay, here we go. The founding fathers who wrote the constitution believe this is so emphatically they placed in the first amendment, the freedom of speech, religion, press, assembly, and citizens, the ability to petition the government, okay? This is very important. Petitioning. As a kingdom citizen and as an American citizen, as an American citizen, you and I both have the ability to vote. We can vote Republican, Democrat, liberal, independent. What's the other ones? I forget. So as an American citizen, we get to petition. We can protest on the streets at our free will, right? We can protest the government. We can protest you know, environmental concerns, we can protest anything for the matter, right? We petition the US government to make a change in the lands of the territory of which you and I live in. That's called petitioning. When you petition, you're putting pressure. That's why I use the, the word. It's, it's the language to help people understand what I'm saying, right? So when I petition the US government, I'm putting pressure, right? So say, for example, what's the big popular one? 
in in 2020 that that went went wild right caused a lot of a uh, uh, trend and was black lives matter right what did they do they protest in the street or they wrote letters or they uh, whatever they did right all the things that they did on the news right uh, both both the good the bad and the ugly and everything in between they petitioned the u.s government they put pressure on the u.s government so the united states of america according to the constitution there's a petitioning process. There's a protest process. There's rules and regulations. There's do's and don'ts on how you can get the US government to release resources for the citizens so that we can glorify the United States of America and prove to everybody in the world this is the greatest country in the world to live in, right? That's the whole idea. Other countries do the same thing. Everybody wants glory. Very simple. Well, in the kingdom of heaven ruled by God, that's a very similar structure very similar structure. He has a petition, what you and I would call a prayer. It's the Our Father prayer. That's a petition. You and I as kingdom citizens, when we say that prayer, we're essentially arriving in the courts of heaven. The Holy Spirit is our lawyer, right? The Son is our witness on stand. And the Father is the judgment that will pop release resources to that citizen because they're conducting themselves like a citizen so essentially when i declare things in the name of bomb right when i declare things when i give glory in a way i'm i'm petitioning my government to give me access to the keys so that those resources may be distributed here on earth to my pleasure and so that other people can indulge in in the pleasure and receive prosperity abundance, love, happiness, go down the list, right? Whatever you want to say. So these are similar structures. And I think a lot of us are trying to find the right structure. Is it capitalism? Is it socialism? Is it communism? Is it uh, dictatorship? What is it? What is the right structure for everyone to have heaven on earth? Is that a possibility with mankind and our free will. Can it be done? I believe it can. That's my optimistic belief in a world full of chaos, hate, fear, doubt, worry, evilness. This is why I spend all my time. This is all I'm doing all day long. I'm searching. I'm studying. I'm never going to stop learning. If I'm wrong about something, I want to be wrong today and yesterday so I can correct it so I can be better tomorrow. That's my whole thing. Okay. So can a man pressure the almighty God? Eh, technically, I, I would I would assume no. I've never seen a scripture that says that. But the the when I petition my government, it's implying that I'm I'm asking the Lord for access that He granted me according to His constitution, and I'm simply saying the words so that I may receive the the resources from the source both physical spiritual mental whatever you want to call it go down the list okay so hopefully that helps this is an awesome thing to hear you say denzel great info yep 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 yep. i thought you were raised catholic i was yes from what you were saying yep i was and then you know i discovered dr miles monroe and everything changed dude i, I don't know the things change Answer to my concerns. Thank you for sharing. Preach, brother. Yes, we borrow family from family. Yep. Open to learning more and test it. Uh, maybe Christians are afraid of the pride factor you mentioned and feels the structure uh, might go against our faith base. I'm seven day Advent Adventist or Adventist uh, Christian. Just my thought. I think you're right. She says I'm probably wrong. Don't know. I like the transparency. I do. I really do. So she says, look, I'm seven day Adventist, but I might be wrong about this. Um, but she says Christians are maybe they're afraid of the pride and the fear factor. So what do we do? We we limit people's ability to think big. If we do that, you're creating a culture of small thinkers. I grew up in a household where nobody told my parents or their parents to think big. If they did, they would have 10x more than me, not me have 10x more than them. That doesn't make sense when a 25 year old has more resources than their predecessors. That doesn't make sense. The scripture says that a good man leaves an inheritance for their children's children. So therefore, whenever offspring is born, 
that offspring should be given a head start, so to speak. And, and in addition to the resources, there should be a culture of work ethic, of etiquette, striving for more, doing better than your previous generation. So you, you carry the name, you carry the honor, right? You carry the courage that your ancestors had. You, you pull from all of that knowledge and wisdom, you bring it to today, and you keep moving forward. You don't squander it, you don't waste it. But when you're not taught, and then you go in the world, right? Bible tells us to be, you know, uh, uh, you be in the world, but not of it, right? They say that right, be in the world, but not of it. So I, I can operate in this world, right? Okay, I'm an American citizen, this is how it works. We're a capitalist society, all right, boom. I'm gonna build a business, I'm gonna 10X my income. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to redirect these resources back to the kingdom, give him the glory, give him all and say, listen, God, it's all yours. I'm just a steward. Yeah, I'm giving, I'm offering, I'm receiving and living in abundance. And I'm showing you how great you are uh, as a king. But you're right. He says, Bree, I think it's culture, not so much based on religion. OK, cool. She says, OK, makes sense. Okay, you don't you don't have to be a faith based organization to set up a 508C1A. We can do it for ourselves and family yeah i i think there might be some restrictions so i'm not sure if if um i gotta look into it right we gotta we gotta we gotta research one so apparently we can do it for ourselves right um i'm, I'm sure this this costs money right we don't know how much yet gotta look into that you might be right the, the the closest thing that in my mind for what i've been doing is doing you know a trust the will life insurance which is tax free you got the roth ira tax free hsa tax deferred i've been acquiring those tools but if you're telling me that i can turn i can have the whole cake and eat it too in a 508 c1a mm, that is very interesting that is very interesting miles and row uh teachings of kingdom principles are what you are speaking of right get familiar with getting familiar with his concept yeah, Miles Monroe is about the only person at scale that exposed kingdom mandates, kingdom principles, the kingdom of heaven here on earth at scale. He is now dead, right? So I'm, I'm learning from dead people, right, about the kingdom. There are very few people at scale that are teaching kingdom. At scale, you see prosperity Bible, prosperity living. You At, at scale, you see these, these huge... Uh, mega churches that are talking on a lot of different things. I'm not, I'm not bashing them, but I'm just like, what about the kingdom? Am I going to learn about the kingdom today? Am I going to learn about how to manage my money today? Or do I just have to hope and pray that if I tithe this 10%, that God's going to give me a thousand dollars and I'm going to be cool? I don't know if that's biblically true, right? So I'm, I'm constantly challenging where I'm hearing the word from, even Miles Monroe stuff. I'm, I'm constantly challenging his stuff, right? Is what he said valid? Yes, okay, why? Because boom, okay, bam. And I just keep, you know, trying to curate the information the best way I can. Mr. Monroe's kingdom teachings has also changed my life. Highly recommended, lots of wisdom. Yeah, absolutely. Love Miles Monroe, great. So we have our homework, okay? We talked about the first hour, we talked about velocity banking during a market crash. I gave you the playlist to check out. For those of you that are brand new, you'll go check that out. We talk about the velocity banking, different options in terms of what you can pay for, mainstream options, high risk, high reward options, uh, alternative options. Talked about the debt tools, your four major numbers. Then I talked about solutions in a market crash. If you lose your job, right? Uh, you lose income, business is slow. You're in a tough season. Building strong networking relationships during the good seasons before the crash happens is a very strategic way to secure yourself from price increases of certain goods and services and you can offset it in other areas that you can't control like you and i can't control the price of oil you and i can't control the price of eggs right or apples but if you were in a kingdom maybe you could let's say you live in a state all right say you live north florida area and you know a farmer that sells eggs and apples and milk, you could potentially, building a strong relationship with that farmer, exchanging value for value, you could get your milk, your eggs, your beef, your ham, whatever it is that he offers at cost. Instead of 
when he sells it to the supermarket and then the supermarket sells it to you at a, at a higher rate so that they can profit. Go to the source. And that's what the kingdom is all about. It's all about going to the source and then receiving resources that get distributed amongst the kingdom citizens to operate in a heaven-like earth, right? Where you can experience kingdom of heaven here on earth. That's what the Our Father prayer is all about, right? It's very interesting stuff. So uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Uh, got the got the laughing emoji there. Let's see. Uh, uh, Lee Phillips Addy on YouTube might help. Let's look that up before we close out. So let me just share my screen again. Show you guys the, um, whatchamacallit, <clears throat> show you guys the resources, right? Destiny 508, check that out. Icovest.academy, check that out. Financially lit uh, channel right here. You could reach out to this gentleman and he'll explain 508C very well, better than I could. Okay, we talked about all the different, um, this was um, dream, plan, smile, about the velocity banking, you know, like an, an anti view on it. We talked about Michael Burry, Ray Dalio, interesting individuals to understand how the markets are operating right now in our country. Check out I Allegedly YouTube channel. Very, very um, powerful stuff he's putting out. I think this applies very well to Velocity Banking students, okay? And then, like I said, he's got a laundry list of links that talks about all the banks in America that are closing or consolidating, closing credit lines and all that good stuff. And here were some of the links that went over, right? We talked about that. Uh, uh, the playlist, Velocity Banking in a Crisis, that is public. You can see that just by going to my YouTube channel, right? And you'll, you'll see it. Uh, so let's open that up. And this talks about how to operate your money in a crisis, right? And this video will also be in there. So you can refer back to it, catch the replay, okay? Financially Lit Podcast, and that is it. That's everything. So I'm all done here. Let's see, uh, any other uh, questions, put them in now. I'm gonna get ready to wrap things up. Lenzel, been listening to a while, good presentation. Isaiah 45, 11 is the only scripture I know of. Otherwise, scripture indirectly speaks of placing a demand. Uh-oh, uh-oh, eye candy. Maybe I was in the right uh, um, terminology. Maybe my language is a little, you know, uh, but this this might be interesting. So. Isaiah 45, 11 is the only scripture I know. Otherwise, scripture indirectly speaks of placing a demand on God's promises by exercising faith. Very interesting. We're going to have to look at that. We're going to have to look at that. It's powerful stuff. So I, I'm taking my notes. I'm going to look at that. Love, Miles Monroe. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Been thinking about networking locally as well. Trading value. Yes. I'm telling you. Think about all of the things that you consistently buy on a monthly basis. If you come from the Spanish community, black community, Caucasian, Italian, it's smart in my mind. You know, typically we relate to our own cultures, right? Like I, as a Puerto Rican, I'm probably going to relate pretty well to another Puerto Rican than I would to say my white folks or my black folks, right? We're going to relate differently. You got a different culture. I got a different culture. We come together. We collaborate. Now, if I come from low income, low standards, low minority group, whatever it is, whatever your, your, your story, your, your situation is, whatever, whatever I come from, right? It is very important, hear me out, to look outside of your culture. Very important. Consider it. Befriend another culture that's operating at a level of etiquette and ethics. Has nothing to do with the color of your skin or your circumstance. It's all about the standard, the kingdom standard and build relationships with those people, sow seed. At the same time, you do what you can to communicate with your own culture. That might be the most difficult thing to do because the minute you go outside of your culture, especially in low minority, low income communities, you're immediately bashed for working with say the white man, or if you're Spanish, you're you know working with another culture. Right? You're immediately bashed. It happens all the time. It's it's like this defense that initially comes up. Like, what, 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 what you doing working with them instead of coming with us? And da, da, da. So you do your best, right? I know me personally, I had to look outside my culture to find the resources that were in abundance, that were there. And then once I obtained those resources, I am doing what I can to talk to my own culture slowly but surely. 
It starts with your family, close friends, blood starts there. But they may not identify with you the moment you decide to change or repent your way of thinking. They may not like you anymore. They may disown you. They may abandon you. They may cut you out of the, the barbecue and the reunions and they might excommunicado you, right? Whatever it is. If it happens, all that is showing is that you may be potentially getting cult closer and closer to your purpose because very few people ever experience their purpose, let alone the kingdom. Very few people. So the closer you get, understand the less people are going to come with you. The less and less, less and less people are going to come with you for that ride because they just don't understand the kingdom or the culture, whatever word terminology you want to use. They don't understand what you're doing. They don't understand that you're trying to access from another location, bring it back here, feed the tribe, right? And bring them with you. Some are not going to come, but you do what you can, especially in the, in the lower communities. Now, if you come from... Uh, 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 say a well-established community, but there was some crisis and you guys lost your wealth. Look back at your history. You just got to repeat the, the good things. Learn from the mistakes that your ancestors made, previous mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, great-grandma, great-grandfather. Just take the best, right? Apply it to today. This is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm trying to do for myself. I'm taking all the good from my past. I'm taking all the good from my mom's past, from my dad's past, from my dad's dad and my mom's mom taking all the good I can, bringing it up today, 21st century. Main, I, I still maintain my culture. I didn't, I didn't become a different culture, right? I'm, I'm still who I am. But I'm just operating in a structure that allows me to exceed at my highest level. And that's what I want you that are with me, still 50, 60 plus people watching, to experience and to continue to experience if you're already experiencing it. Now it's a matter of multiplying it, growing and exposing people to it. it. Becomes a different role that we take on. So I think we went over a lot today. Let me just show the board one more time. Been a lot of fun, had a lot of fun working with you guys. Um, all of my links are in the descriptions of every video in order to, to get in touch with me, either one-to-one, -one, my programs, other, uh, resources and connections and affiliate relationships and all that good stuff. Um, let's continue to keep growing. I had a wonderful time. God bless. And I will be talking with you very, 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 very soon. Let's see. Um, if you're not on my email newsletter, you can join my email newsletter by clicking the first link in the description below and that will get you on my email newsletter. I'm gonna be doing a private live stream November 16th. That's next week, Tuesday. Um, would love for you to be there, okay? We're gonna be talking about income opportunities in the marketplace, right? I'm gonna try and bring on uh, uh, an expert that works with people on increasing their income and their the whole focus is building the kingdom economy, which is very interesting to me. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for that, but it's private. And the only way to get invited, you got to be on my email newsletter or a client already of mine, and you'll receive that, that invite. So I'd love for you to jump on there so that we can have a deeper, tighter discussion, dialogue a little more, possibly even bring you on the call and we can, and we can talk, uh, we can have some fun together.